Hey guys, we're back for one final discussion on The Mandalorian. I'm a little sad it's over, but we don't have that long to wait. So let's what? tell you our series review score and talk about the future. Hey guys, welcome back. First, I want to thank our sponsors throughout this whole wonderful uh, Mandalorian series, uh, Stardust. Guys, download the Stardust app as a favor to us. It's really fun. You'll find a lot of like-minded people there sharing their reactions and impressions to upcoming media. Uh, we do so. We had a section on there. And we also had a contest, which one of y'all have officially won. So, Joe, who is our winner? after we went through my these. best and only friend Schroeder 93 <laughs> I know what you're trying to do what? Joe. you're trying to get what a plus you, what one are you, talking about? <laughs> you have won uh, the galaxy's edge trip you and a plus one all expenses prayed to go out there thank you so much for downloading the stardust app for interacting with us on mm -hmm. there and to the rest of you uh please still support us on there uh you know follow the angry joe show it directly supports the show we appreciate it very much and congratulations to you man and here's his winning entry all right i'm just gonna let you guys know right now this is star wars done right i have loved it Everything I've seen from The Mandalorian, the cinematography, the writing, the character development, the music, everything is flawless. Keep it up. Keep doing great. I want to see more of this in, in some of the main uh, titles in the Star Wars universe. Um, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. It is fantastic. Mandalorian is awesome. Baby Yoda, just what what a what a fantastic idea. I know some people are wearing it out at this point because of all the memes, but I just think that that introducing this character was a fantastic addition. It makes Star Wars interesting again mm -hmm. and it it is uh, you know, something that we can all love. It breaks uh, genres, sexes, uh, uh, preferences. Everybody loves Baby Yoda. The okay, thing that Joe, I love the most Joe, is... Here, Baby Yoda, the, don't drop him. <laughs> precious cargo. The thing I love the most as a fan, I actually listened to our... The thing I wanted, a Boba Fett... Yoda. We get a Yoda Mandalorian? Oh, fuck. The littlest, like, cutest helmet ever. Give him a helmet with his ears sticking out. Give him out. a little <laughs> rocket pack. and That would be so cool. Get a little flamethrower. I would, love, I would love that. That's total so fan. actually made some concept art for it. Mm -hmm. and really? I, I would send it mm -hmm. to you. You going to throw yeah. it up? Okay, yeah. sweet. Nice. <laughs> it looks amazing. I love our, our viewers. that they, they, They're on the ball. Thank you so much for doing that. And if you guys maybe want to see this on a shirt, we'll ask Jeff if we can we can use his design. Maybe throw this on some shirts. Let us know in the comments. Would you buy a Yoda Lorian shirt from the Angry Army and 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 Jeff? So thank you so much, Jeff, and sweet. Um, okay, so uh, since this is the final episode, it's the last time to talk about stuff we forgot. Episode eight, uh, episode seven, we didn't forget anything. I felt really bad, uh, really good about that. But, good. But episode eight, we we did forget some stuff. Yeah, well, uh, a few things. A lot. So uh, here we no. go. A lot. There's a few things. Um, Moff Gideon mentioned the Rebel Shock Trooper was from Alderaan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Cara Dune was from Alderaan. You know what Alderaan is, Joe? Oh yeah. What? It's no longer with us. Ah, very good. Space dust. <laughs> that one little line gives us the whole reason why she really hates the Empire so much, you know, outside yeah. her normal reasons. Uh, the Mandos that save him were actually Death Watch yeah. from the Clone Wars, pre-Clan pre Vizsla. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a detail that I completely missed and we, we didn't uh, talk about. Mm -hmm. And that was huge. Um also, the earned insignia uh, by making Baby Yoda uh, his family. That's how he yeah. earned his insignia. He, Baby Yoda's now his family. They took down that uh, Mudhorn yeah. together, mm -hmm. and they earned it. And I just – that kind of flew over my head. I thought he just got the Mudhorn insignia because he fought it earlier. Uh, but I did understand it. 
But thinking about it more, Steve it just makes son. it even better that yeah. that's a half forget. We have forgot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then the incinerator trooper uh, is the uh, is actually different from a flame trooper. We've seen a flame trooper, uh, you know, in in first order. We've seen you okay. know flames elsewhere, but the incinerator trooper is actually from Force Unleashed. So they canonized mm. uh, a, a trooper uh, from that game. Uh, it was even an unlockable skin uh, for Star Killer at Damn. one point. So that was cool. And they've made like Black That's Series helmets and, and action <laughs> figures. Yeah. So uh, it's cool that some of the expanded universe is still being dipped into. That's no longer canon. What they call legacy now, uh, and they're still canonizing some of that. So much stuff. Uh, we last saw the dark saber. I wanted to talk about the dark saber some more, but we can hold that for you know actual uh, you know when we get to it. Um, and then Moff didn't give them you know nine hours, as in because in episode seven he said that the day cycle is quicker than in most planets. So he really only gives them a couple hours at best. You know, still a long but time. that's a roundabout way yeah. of saying I'm going to give you a couple hours. Because they went through hours. the lava, the whole Tie Fighter fight. And yeah, the it's, sun still was still, it's still yeah. daytime. It's still daytime. Give him a lot of time. Uh, we didn't mention specifically that the Mother Mando knew about the Jedi, and then she called them space wizards or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Or no, she no, called we them did. sorcerers. We did mention that. We, oh, we, we did? talked about that. Oh. That was sweet. All right. Well, y'all are wrong. Uh, and there was, uh, and then I love his name. Uh, you know, we Din. didn't, we didn't re-say his name, uh, Din Djarin. Uh, now, it's actually, you know, the D, you know, uh, Din Djarin, the last name is D-J-A-R-R-I-N, and I think this is most likely a reference to uh, Django or Django, mm -hmm. where the D is yeah, silent. Like yeah. Get it? So the it's old like Westerns, the yeah. Western, so his name I is kind of... Jar Jar. I was like, <gasps> no, not Jar Jar. Stop it. <laughs> Django Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> Jingle <Jason. fit>. um, <laughs> No, but they did have. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, and I, there was one thing that uh, people have. One guy pointed out in the comments because everybody else joined, uh, enjoyed the the episode mostly. He said, "I did have a problem with how many times the droid endangered Baby Yoda's life despite his programming." Which, when you think about it, he does endanger Baby Yoda. He's a baby proof vest. He's just like hanging out, <laughs> just going right. But. That's all dramatic, uh, you know, purposes, climactic battle scenes, and when you're running, I'm scared on, for him. Well, what when if you're the, doing a lot of good things? You know, suspension of disbelief. The, the droid knows that the Empire won't shoot Baby Yoda because they need him alive. True. So he was just protecting himself. But these troopers, I, they, I know, no one can hit anything. They are I not know, accurate. I know, I know. Not accurate. Let's not even let's not even talk about precision because precision is different from accuracy. Yes. They're not even accurate. They're nowhere in the realm of precision, uh, precise. Anyways, and then finally, our review was shorter than the episode again. But what, like a minute, like, we something missed. like that. But like a minute or something. So the guy who punched uh, Baby Yoda, punched Jason, Jason, Jason yeah. he's Sudu taking a lot Sudu of heat. Yeah, <laughs> like, how internet. dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, all that heat is in jest, right? Because yeah. I don't want people actually really harassing people. It's in jest harassing. Yeah. Because uh, I was like, I didn't know it was him. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll talk about the dark saber some more. Uh, but let's go right into uh, our review uh, our, of the whole series, right? Mm -hmm. So it was fucking amazing. I think I think everybody can agree yes, that we 100% uh, agree this is amazing. A lot of people like to talk about how difficult the Star Wars fans are and how toxic they are. And and to be honest, some of it is true. Uh, we we are a group that's very particular. We have some that that, that we lose, like what we like <laughs> that lose their cool. But you know, honestly, if they would if they would listen to us a little bit more, and, and then also write uh, good stories, write well, not not just provide fan service just because we said something, uh, then then I think it would uh, it would do fine. And that's proven. By the Mandalorian. Yeah. The Mandalorian isn't pure fan service. It respects the lore. It it, it it doesn't do anything crazy like, you know, hyperspace jumping and breaking the lore and contradicting itself. It doesn't do a lot of that stuff. And it, it just pays so much respect to the original idea of Star Wars. Originally, uh, Star Wars was supposed to be a send up to serials. Uh, Book Rogers, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and even westerns, and and this is what Dave Filoni, and this is what John Favreau, I should say, mostly uh, wanted to have this series inspired by, and that choice alone 
I think, really laid a solid foundation for the entire uh, season. You know, this this sort of idea of this old school gun smoke uh, t- television series mm-hmm. and things like that on television that are like serialized, that you have little independent stories going on. Now, he added on top of there a nice little layer of an overarching story of Baby Yoda and finding family and purpose and the foundlings and, and honor, and it's just great. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, let's just give final ratings, uh, and tell me, you know, what episodes were the best, what episodes were the weakest and, and then give a rating and tell me why, why okay. you did I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, no, no, no. this whole series. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This whole series. I really enjoyed. I had a great time, but, um, uh, my, I think it comes to no surprise. My weakest one was the gunslinger. Okay. That was episode five or four. It is episode I- Five, yeah. Okay. This mm. one with Toro? Yeah, Toro. Yeah. The thing that kind of fails with me with this series is if it had longer time, mm-hmm. it would do it more justice. Because sometimes you're introduced to this character, and you're like, okay, well, let me know about this, what's going on, mm-hmm. and next moment he's gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's not enough time to kind of flesh him out or anything. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I love the music. I love the arcs. And I'm still kind of sad about Quill. <sighs> I know, right? Maybe, maybe season two, maybe he'll come back from the he, dead. He, he right? sticks his hand through the rocks. Joe, what the and the hell? You just out. scolded me and made me realize in the last episode that he's never coming back. Then in this episode, <laughs> you say, is he coming back? You turn into me. I thought it was a nightmare. You said, okay, it's a nightmare. <laughs> you said that why would he bury his friend with no body? And I was the one who said maybe there was no body. In the there wasn't a body. He turned into a force ghost, it. and he comes back to Damn. mentor him through the force. Or memory. Whatever, yo. <laughs> and uh, the best one would probably be the last episode because there was so much action, so much going on, but it's so much backstory too with the Mandalorians and the whole this is your son now. He is your destiny. Redemption. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what would you so, give? Woo! Drum roll, please. <laughs> the whole series. As a whole. Right? As a whole. How does it feel on the you whole? You know, and, and, and realize, okay, let me just remind everybody our rating system. You know, it, 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 it ten, uh, one is like complete garbage. It's what the fuck. Five is an average show. It's not really like that memorable, but it's not that bad. There's you're not really going to turn it off. You're not going to turn it off, but you're going to keep watching. And then a 10 is not perfect, okay? It's nobody. It's not here on the Angry Joe Show. That's not perfect. What it is is it's legendary. It, it's what you compare other things to within that genre or within that, that subdivision, what you compare things to, you know, as this is the new sort of standard. Hmm. I'm going to give this, uh, I can't say high or low. This going to be no. an 8. An 8 out of 10. Oh. I really enjoyed oh. this one. But what oh. Lax is like, I just want some more time with it for these characters to develop for me. Oh. And some of the episodes. Very mad at you right now. Well, like skip, said, it's not your five, turn. Yeah. Skip, skip, skip. It's my skip. turn right now. All right. So, yeah, 5 was pretty weak. was the weakest one. The one before that one, uh, what was it called? 4. Four. Episode four. Yeah, they were trying to do a little bit too much with that one. It's like, oh, you got to stay here. And just like I said, this needs more time. So that's an eight for me. I, I don't believe like you. An eight. Go I ahead. don't believe you that you don't like episode four. I'm going to go back and rewatch your episode four review. I did like it, but. <laughs> Anyways, very yeah. mad at you right now, Joe. Mm-hmm. Alex, are you here to piss me off too? Uh. <laughs> I I actually really liked this series, and I think that this is... We got a lot of really good television this year. And uh, with this and The Boys... And Witcher. The Witcher, and you know there was that one that was really ah, disappointing. Ah, yes, very good. Television. But there was some really good television, and this this was right up there with it. And I know some people have problems with it being serialized, and they did they they people that it's not I'm not one of them, but there's people do have issues with it. My, my main issues with this was the abbreviated. I mean, he touched on a little bit the the abbreviated storytelling where there's so there's so little time, there's so much 
tell and not show. Someone dies and they go, that guy was important because they couldn't, they didn't have time to show you that this person was important. Now, there were yeah. certain directors that did a much, much better job. In episode six, we had some of my favorite dialogue, like almost unimportant dialogue between the Mandalorian and the guy running that... Uh, the, the prisoner. The, the, yeah, they doing the heist. Mm -hmm. And so they're talking. You find out that there's an uneasy connection between the two, that they used to be partners, but they don't have to say, he was my partner and I don't trust him as much as they did in some other mm -hmm. episodes. Directed by Rick Famuyiwa. Yeah, yeah, he was the he was the uh, one of the X Wing pilots in the end. Um, and so I, I really did like the series. I think that they 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 did a good job with storytelling, with a couple exceptions. But if I have a, an entire episode, one episode out of eight, mm -hmm. I mean that's twelve. You lose twelve percent right there. Yeah, but you're just I see. I hate this because this what uh, uh, critical said too in his moist meter review. Yeah. That that too. But y'all are like rating these episodes big fat zeros as if they're, but they're not non-existent zero. and they I, don't and they suck ass. But they're not non-existent and they don't suck ass. They're just not quite at the level as no, the other episodes. Ep episode, you know, pissing me off. Eight no, hundred out of a thousand. Does that make does that make it better? For but I'm, it's I'm not, not giving. You're not giving it a zero. But that episode was not good. It okay. was not up to its standard. It was you not. You didn't up give it a not good rating. Ep the the one with Toro. Mm -hmm. We all didn't like that episode. What did you rate it? I don't know. That's what I thought. <laughs> and a not good rating would be below. Why am I arguing with you uh, on your rating? I yeah. apologize so to our viewers. We, I apologize. Skip. We we talk. Skip. If you don't know, we've been making reference yeah, to a, Skip and Shannon. It's a, a sports show undisputed that it's me and basically Joe what happened. Yeah, yeah. Watching. So it's not your turn. It's my turn. Yeah. It's my turn. It's my turn right now. Okay, say so that to me. At say the that. at the beginning of when we started reviewing this, we said that it rating individual TV episodes is impossible. It's tough, and it's tough. So if I gave it a pass, I shouldn't have at the time because in the scheme of things, looking back, I will always remember. Uh, I will always skip that one. Okay, and yeah, so yeah. now that I know, we're what now the in show, the scheme of things. When I know how good it started, which it started great, and I know how good it finished, that middle section is just like, man, am I going to skip this episode and this episode? Am I going to fast forward? So those episodes weren't up to par for me. Okay. And so it does detract from it. Now, okay. based on how you just describe our rating, where I don't think this is legendary, I don't think I'll be comparing all TV to it, okay. but I think this is really damn good. And I think I liked it a little bit better than Joe. And so even though it slugged down in the middle, I think overall it kept a standard fairly high, and I'm going to give it a 9. Yeah! All right. Thank you, Al. Yeah. So you, if you didn't interrupt me, you wouldn't have been up there. Yeah, hey, that's fine part the of the show is interruptions. Yeah. All right. But no, you can tell me from now on. It's not your turn, Joe. Yeah. It's not your turn. <laughs> All right, guys. So it's not my turn. It's now your turn. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I know I completely understand. And I, I, I really like your critical eye. And I like Joe's critical eye as well. You're right. It's not... Oh, well, we gave those two episodes a six or a seven, so it shouldn't be rated as we didn't like it. And when you average things out, then it's more like a nine, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it's more overall and, yeah. and how things going. So I've heard this a lot from, from some of my friends that episodes four and uh, five were the weakest. Four being uh, Sanctuary when yeah. they go to that planet and fight the ATST. I like that and then one, though. The right, that's what I'm battle. saying. That's what I wanted to say, I like Alex. I'm like, you. Like I don't know what y'all are talking well, about with episode four. I liked it from start to finish. Don't give me no bullshit. Yeah. Monkey shine. It's my turn, even though <laughs> I interrupt you all the time. Yeah. Um, no, so so I'm with you, though, Alex. I When people say, I don't, I don't really like four and five. No, I like four. I disagree with you completely, and I'll spit all over you. <laughs> um, but but I do agree that five is the weakest. Five is uh, weak. Uh, which was called uh, the, the gunslinger. The gunslinger. gunslinger. Four gunslinger. was just too short. It was twenty minutes too short. Uh huh. Uh, and That's four, a problem. Four, remember, was directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. Of course, she yeah. had some some help from those around her, uh, but she obviously directed it herself and did a good job. Um, and then uh, Dave Filoni was the one that directed mm. the gunslinger, which. Uh, it's a little surprising that that one would be uh, one of the weaker ones because Dave Filoni, if you don't know, uh, which other one did he did he direct? He directed episode one, which is one of the strongest. So um, I'm I'm with you, Alex. I wanted to give this a 10 out of 10 uh, in order to to give it the baseline of I'm going to compare things to it. 
but I just don't think it reaches that because there are several problems with the series. One, the truncated episodes, like you said, that led to some dialogue being truncated and being less believable. And I can totally see how you can even achieve an eight just from the writing alone, right? Uh, but those those two episodes in your mind, drug it down to that eight. But for me, it's not two episodes. It's episode five, the one episode. So combine that with the, the truncated writing and, and the you know, brevity of some of it when you're supposed to really be buying into the world. Mm -hmm. No mega big episodes like we normally get in season finales, hour, mm -hmm. hour 20. None of that uh, is going to bring the rating down to a 9 out of 10 for me. I think it does manage to earn a 9. And I can see how anybody can hit an 8, but I'm pushing it up because um, – of the way, you know, how it came together so excellently. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage this uh, stuff for the future. I'm nervous uh, for season two, but not that nervous because I think the people in charge here know what they're doing. Uh, we they lose some people, though. So what? so De Deborah, Deborah Chow is not going to be as involved with this one because she's got her own projects and stuff to work on. So yeah, a lot of the strength came from her episode. some of the best episodes. So I'm, like, I'm, I'm not saying I'm worried. Right. I really Dave, Dave Filoni's going to have – maybe he'll take over that. I don't uh, want that. Maybe Rick uh, – Half of his episodes were bad. Sh you don't – shut up. That was just <laughs> – maybe it was the weak story thing, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> um, so but so there's a little nervousness in, in, in season two. Um, Always is with Star Wars. And we'll talk about that in, in yeah. a bit. But what my favorite episode was – the one where all the Mandalorians show up to, uh, you know, help. Oh, them. the Eagles. Yeah. So the sin. The sin. Episode three. Deborah Chow, uh, outnumbered in corner. The Mandalorian is, is escaped That's only when other Mandalorians show up. This is the way. This and I was like, way. fuck. It was great. Hey, they fly um, now. Uh, with <laughs> they do fly now. <laughs> with the fine with the, being a close second by your episode, the one your favorite is the redemption because yeah. we even get we even get Death Watch in that one too. Mandalorian showing Sweet. up and blowing up stuff so guys just fantastic eight nine nine what is your rating put it down below uh and just i'm so happy that we only less than a year wait fall 2020 is when we start to get more of these episodes mm. uh and so while the shorter episode length we're over here thinking i mean it really makes me mad i want to deduct another whole point for going into it like thinking I'm going to get eight hours and we don't get no, no eight hours. We get more like four and That's some right. change. Like, if they added more, then for me it would have been like. I'm, I'm not mad. talking about like with a movie when you're adding like I'm not saying we need to add new scenes. I'm saying give two, three minutes to each individual scene. You're going to have right. cameras rolling. The actors and actresses are already there. Yeah. Let them talk for a few more minutes. So it, 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 I understand that Toro – you know, is important or, you know, whatever the hell he was there to be doing. And I care when he betrays them. Uh, and I, I just, there was no reason for them to be that short. And I hope that they fix that in this next one. Right. Uh, they're not going to. I think part of the reason <laughs> why, it. I'm sorry, guys, to br put, do, put that on you. Right. But can I think it's eight, false hope. Eight, eight out of ten now? <laughs> part of the reason, you can go to eight if you want. We're still no. in the episode. You can modify it during no, the episode. No, it's good. You're going to bump it and because it was so solid and I, I love you for it. So, but here's the thing. Uh, I think because they're so short, they're able to provide it a lot sooner. So that's one benefit of them being shorter, uh, that they can they can crank these out sooner. I know you go, wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. I'm just saying, if you don't add it, I'm just not saying add new scenes. <coughs> Two, three minutes per existing sure. scene of dialogue is real easy to do. I agree, but this is probably going to yeah. be a reoccurring uh, problem, and I don't think they're fixing it for season it's two. So you're already going to get a there's negative a, one from us. Yeah, there's going to be a guy on. jumping around the corner going, I am the bad guy, and you're like, oh, cool, that's the bad guy. He's like, oh, this one's only ten minutes long. <laughs> oh, I have been shot. <laughs> Feel uh, bad for me. You see yeah. that? He has been shot. <laughs> <laughs> dan, 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 dan. <laughs> ten. Anyway, ten out of ten. <laughs> okay, so let's get into our our next uh, <laughs> section here, discussing um, uh, what you know, some of the major reveals and what we think is going to happen in season two. So I'm going to go back to the dark saber. The dark saber was pro quite possibly the biggest thing that they've uh, teased at, and it really uh, sort of points the direction on where they're going. I think because you don't you don't reveal such a a crazy device like that to then drop that storyline in season two. Because if they do, we're going to be fucking pissed. Well, that's what they do in Star Wars. Yeah, there's a lot I of I know. That's what <laughs> Rise of Skywalker, yeah, Last Jedi. Yeah. 
But this, the, this is, uh, these are people who know what they're doing. So yeah. the, let me just tell you a little bit about the dark saber and where we could potentially be going. So the last we saw of the dark saber was in Rebels, Star Wars Rebels, the series. So it ties that in uh, with Bo Katan cries. So we might get a prequel on how it ended up with Gideon, uh, whether that's in flashback scenes in, um, you know, um, season two or whether they do a Disney Plus. Series. No, flashback scenes. Yeah. Flashback. Season two. Yeah. Um, but it, so basically uh, the lore is the one who made it originally made it because it kind of looks like a lightsaber to the uninitiated and it kind of is the one who made it is a mando called uh tare Vizla, who became a jedi so a mandalorian jedi um they've been kind of dropping you know hints of jedis and we are all talking about mandalorians we've got a baby yoda um when he died that jedi <clears throat> Or when he died, the Jedi kept his saber at their temple, uh, but it was stolen or basically taken back uh, by the Mandalorians from House Vizsla. And that's how it gets into the hands of the Mando clan for years. Mm -hmm. Now, the last person to wield it was actually Sabine Wren from the Rebel series. And she's fucking awesome, Joe. I know you haven't watched this, but you, you do need to watch it. She's, Let's check it out. she's very colorful armor. Um, and just a badass and a Bo Katan cries after her. Okay. Uh, because, and, and she's, she's keeping it for, uh, Sabine, uh, momentarily. Uh, and then after that, Bo Katan cries has, it. after that, there's apparently a great Mandalorian purge event. Mm -hmm. uh, we heard this all throughout season one, little dropped hints. Uh, so somehow Moff Gideon, uh, got their dark saber, obviously. So that must mean that he likely killed Bo-Katan and possibly Sabine as well because mm -hmm. uh, she's not reclaimed it. And, uh, you know. Those repeating blasters are no joke. I'll and just cut everyone in half. But, but you know what? Doesn't mean not she's Disney. dead because in the timeline, she's older by now in the timeline. Uh, she didn't speak to she... Ray at the end of, of <laughs> so. She's not a Jedi. She's a Mandalorian. We're talking about Sabine <laughs> right, right here. Well, but she, she can still, still be alive. Talking. I did the math for you guys. <laughs> Uh, she was born in 21 BBY. That's before Battle of Yavin, which means that, uh, that and, and this is set in like four or five ABY after the Battle of uh -huh. Yavin, which means uh, and then she was 16, about 16 in Rebels, which means she would be about 30 years old by around the time of the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. uh, so that actually 30 years old, she could still be in her prime. She, this could be our first. That's what I tell myself. This could be our first. <laughs> I'm in my prime. So don't get up too fast. <laughs> <laughs> this could be our first live action character that we see come <laughs> over from some of the, the cartoons, uh, which could lead to maybe a live action Sabine, uh, you know, in the Mandalorian or maybe in her mm. own series. I, I think in the Mandalorian would do best. Um, so, yeah, I mean, very fascinating stuff. Uh is Sabine out there? Will we see Moff ha kill a bow, you know, to, uh, to, to take the dark saber initially? Because nobody's going to get, no Mandalorian is going to give up their dark saber willingly, Bo Katan. Oh, he, he did. Yeah, he yeah. did. So, um, what else? Mando uh, is set up to kill Gideon, I think, uh, in single combat and yeah. retake the dark saber and unite Mandalore once more. Me. That that might be the long term goal, setting up the Mandalorian as the leader of fucking New Mandalore and fucking unite the clans. That's some Lord of the Rings no, shit. Like, that better happen. Now that I'm Yoda thinking goes. about it, that better happen. That if sounds the so end goes, cool. be like, oh, I finally found where Yoda mm -hmm. goes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, fair. It's Yoda. <coughs> oh, thank you. I lost him. I went shopping and I turned my back. He was gone. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about getting middle little uh, yodel to his Child. family or to his race uh, or just uh, being with him and raising him until he's old enough. So let's talk about possibilities. Yaddle, which is the female uh, Yoda species, was believed to have died in a mission ahead of the Clone Wars. Um, but this could be setting up her return as her disappearance has actually never really been explained. They, they mm. mentioned that she might have died, but it's not confirmed. Uh, so Yaddle might be out there. She might be the one that can receive Yoda. She mysteriously disappeared. Maybe she's in hiding. 
uh, she could receive Baby Yoda. What do y'all think? Maybe. I mean, that's that's a bit a of a stretch. New, a that's a stretch. New character. I yeah. think it's gonna be something. New. I think it's because she's a Jedi Master, and there shouldn't be any Masters left. Or mm. Vader would have hunted them all down. Vader did have a. a uh, kill Yaddle at one point in the comics, but it was more a force vision of Yaddle when he was yeah. like training and stuff like that. I think the cloning facility is like the likely, a lightly de a destination for next season because that's the only connection that he's got, right? That the that um, was they the kind of showed in the beginning too. He's like, oh, uh, when they were trying to clone him or something. Yeah, they were trying to like put, get, get they the samples. He's not it's a like, clone. Yeah, so. like knowing because they if they knew where he was and enough to get a tracker. Yeah, I'm not on sure him. we 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 really said that in our reviews. They've confirmed that Yodel. Uh, Baby Yoda is not yeah, a clone. clone, but they wanted that he they was wanted at a cloning facility, so that could be a likely place where we go. Because um, I like to set things up. In the yeah. Shows. Do you think we will ever visit his planet? Yes. Uh, I hope so. I like that he's mysterious and he, like we don't. know I where like the idea because that's George Lucas's initiative. Where we'll never learn about that, but we're starting to learn a little bit more yeah. about the species. Will. Uh, John Faberall respect that, or is this something that they can dig into to keep us intrigued? I don't know. Joe thinks yes. You think no? No, I, th I don't think they need to. To go to his planet? I would yeah. like to. Okay. I, I kind of would like to, too. But see, like, a hundred of these running around? I don't know if I want to see a hundred. I, I hope I would that they're live there. very rare. They could just be forced <laughs> beings, and that's it. So I'm going to, uh, when we get to season two, I'm going to start the Yoda Lorian watch. <laughs> get it? Yoda Lorian. Yeah, That's yes. the fan art that we have there. Mm -hmm. A combination of uh, uh, Mandalorian and Yoda. <laughs> yes. um, and then, uh, so what do you think about uh, canceling Disney Plus now that uh, th this is over? W are you guys going to cancel your Disney Plus? I am not. You're going to keep it? Yes. Okay. Because uh, why would you cancel? It's not your account. <laughs> You're just you, borrowing you, you a password. He didn't, didn't let me finish. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> borrowing my password. No, my sister has it. But I do actually just like to, from time to time, watch old flicks on Disney and Pixar and okay. stuff. So, well, <clears throat> we coming up in February. We got the Clone Wars resolution. And I need series. to watch that. It's it's on there, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's well, going to take you a I long need, time yeah. to get through it, Joe. Uh, That's if you another start it why. now, you might not be able to finish. Well, might, you might not. Be able okay. To. Um, there, and then after, so we got the Clone Wars resolution. Then after that, we got Obi Wan, and then maybe Cassie and Andor. But man, they're really going to uh, need to time these very well and announce at least one other exciting one. Joe, mm -hmm. there are well, rumblings. Mar Marvel ones that are going to be coming out Darth sometime Maul? too, right? That oh, I'm focusing on Star Wars, but you're right. We should be able to include those. So there are rumblings Darth of Maul. yes. There's a rumbling of a Darth Maul series. There's rumblings of a Vader with a. They uh, need a to give more Anakin, time, okay? Hayden Christensen. He needs more time. Uh, if we can get some dark side series, you, yeah. you've got me. You you got me for at least a year or two, uh, because I that's I desperately want to see a dark side series. Yeah. So if that. I will reward uh, Disney Plus with a, a you know long-term subscription. subscription. <laughs> but uh, I think they actually got me already with the Clone Wars resolution, then Obi-Wan, then Cassie and Andor, and then as uh, by then, uh, we, we will be start seeing some of the Marvel uh, spinoffs. Mm -hmm. And those those, those necessar aren't necessarily See, those are just like, lengthy I'm not series. There. They're more like one-offs, uh, so they probably won't last quite as long, but they'll be there. Like the Iron Fist. Yeah. So I don't know I, what I, the point in bringing that up is. I don't feel in a rush to cancel my Disney Plus. Do yeah. y'all? No. Okay. No, I'll keep it for a little while. Okay. Prevents me from having to buy the old Star Wars, the the, the prequels for yeah. our our Star Wars rankings. Uh, some oh, people were floating movies. around that maybe he's meant to find some Jedi, not not necessarily his race. Or, or you know, it's sort of as an alternative to finding his race, they'll find Jedi and they'll leave him with the Jedi. Uh, that are still hiding out somewhere or something. Uh, maybe he'll find Ahsoka and Sabine training new Jedi, ignoring Rey completely. <laughs> Cause no, because that that's not a thing in Force Awakens or the Disney sequel trilogy. So Ahsoka's not training and Sabine. I, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. I, I, I it may be that Sabine is you know sort of like a Han Solo in Force Awakens where she's disenfranchised and her friend died from the dark. Moff Gideon took her, her dark saber and she just never came back to reclaim it. 
but she's supposed to have gone off to find Ezra. Uh, no, Ahsoka uh, did. So anyways, um, I would like to see them explain the current plot hole. So I think there is a plot hole, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that the Mandos shouldn't take their helmets off. Because in, in, in Rebels, in Clone Wars, we've seen them take their helmets off. They don't, they don't care about taking their helmets off. So I think that uh, they will be do explaining that more that inconsistency because I do think we'll That's go right. more into the Jedi mm -hmm. purge or Jedi purge Mandalorian purge. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe the reason why they don't want to take their helmets off anymore. And it's very bad to is after the purge, maybe they cling to, you know, the old ways kind of reclaiming their honor mm. or they just don't want to be found. I mean, if you take your helmet off, they know who you are. You can't, I, I think uh, they know that they look like Mandalorians from the outside. I'm not really sure you need to, uh, take your helmet off for that. Uh, but uh, it's also been said by, uh, you know, John Favreau and, and some of the showrunners that we're going to be meeting more established characters in season two. So mm. now established characters doesn't necessarily mean main characters, but established. Like they pill. said established characters from the Skywalker saga. Oh. So what I'm thinking that Akbar. means I don't want to say <laughs> Akbar. <laughs> I don't want to see, you know, I don't, I don't want to see Luke. I, I don't want to see, you know, no. these. I don't want to see uh, Obi Wan or anybody. Well, I did want to see Obi Wan. I didn't mean to say Obi Wan. I meant to say like Luke, Leia, Han. I think you, you could keep Boba those. Fett. Yes, no. I think that's who. No. I think that's who they're setting up. I want to see Boba Fett, and and I think that would be a great main villain uh, to go with Moff Gideon in season two. Um, but they could be referring to some side characters, like I don't know. Maybe a, a Vader. No, no, Vader's gone. Vader's dead. Uh, who else could they do? Maybe R two D two. A Chewbacca. I I don't know. I I think it's I think it's really just talking about Boba Fett, because Boba Fett got out of the Sarlacc pit in expanded lore. Um, it's kind he's of referenced. <laughs> you don't know that. It's kind of referenced that he's kind of dead, and it's just his armor left over in canon novels. But they've ignored canon novels already in Rise mm -hmm. of the Skywalker, so they could do it again. Um, he killed it from the inside. He's still alive. <laughs> and get this, guys. We completely forgot about this. The mysterious character. Oh, the one that just finds the, the dead. Never never explained. We never, was that actually Moff Gideon? Upon rewatching it over and over and over, it, it kind of doesn't look like the same Moff yeah, Gideon armor or cape. His cape is kind of different at the bottom. So I guarantee you that this established character they're talking about is probably Boba Fett. They're, they're going to have a rival because, we, they, you know, they have to explain to the layman and everybody else that Boba Fett is not a true Mandalorian. Uh, you know, that, that's something that George was very adamant on, that he's not a real Mandalorian. But then why is he using the armor? And Because and it's cool. I know. It is cool. I would... Well, because it's all retroactive. He didn't realize the character would be that popular, so then he increased that po that character's uh, popularity in the prequels because it's a throwback to the moment. And he created all this lore. But I'm just talking about if we're in established canon and thinking <laughs> in, in lore terms. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, what do you guys think about season two? Uh, just don't. I don't want to say. Ex yeah, I don't want to say excited. I think we all know that, but I'm just, I'm telling but you, I'm like, where do you think it's it. going? So we can get, make some predictions. Uh, here. I want so the, you can be like, look, I knew where it was. going. I want Bill Burr and that that cast to come back in some sort of way, yeah. like an uneasy alliance between the two of them, where he just needs more firepower, so he knows to you know break them out because they were really good. I think in that episode they they did a good job. But Has in Bill Burr now? Hmm? They're stuck in prison. Yeah, but he can it's break him out of prison. Shit. He broke him out of prison last time. So Clancy Brown come back, Bill Burr come back, and then uh, get good Cat Lady. Uh, I could do without her. Has Bill Burr, uh, you know, earned his place back after, uh, you know, dropping Baby Yoda? Has he paid his dues? Because he did get fucked up pretty bad and then put on a prison ship. So I think he's paid his dues. We'll allow mm -hmm. him to come back. Even, allow it. even though he, he hit Baby Yoda or <laughs> dropped Baby Yoda. Um, yeah, so... That's what I'm thinking for, for season two. Yeah. And uh, do you guys want to add anything? No. No. Okay. Satisfied. And uh, I'm Just glad, they, I'm glad they didn't bucks. mess it up. Um, I mean, this would have been a real bad year for Star Wars had this not finished strong. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I just want to end this by saying, uh, you know, Dave Filoni, uh, John Favreau, you're our only hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you really are. Literally. And, 
And it's like I almost want these guys to uh, be in charge. You know what? I should include Deborah. Child Deborah, yeah, Deborah, awesome. and Rick. Yeah, because they, they're great directors. And Taika Waititi should, was incredible too. And, that exactly. Finale. So these people, now All that you guys, now Everybody. that there's a pool of uh, five directors, six directors, um, you know, uh, you potentially you use these guys leaving, for though, the right? future of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You said they're leaving. Some of them. Well, Deborah's got her own series. She's doing Obi Wan. So. Mm -hmm. I think it should be so Deborah's fun. doing her own series. Uh, you know, Dave and John are probably busy with season two. Uh, depending on how many seasons we get of The Mandalorian, you know, they could afterwards go back and do The Old Republic. So let's talk about what do you want to see for the Star Wars movies going forward? I think that the Star Wars Skywalker saga, the way it ends completely leaves it in a very bad spot to do additional movies because yeah. you're at power levels now that the tension is no just not you can force heal when you get hurt you could force heal to prevent death when you die it doesn't really matter you're a force ghost and you can interact with objects while you're there so there's force we're gonna we're gonna see ridiculous <laughs> shit like people dying and reviving people fighting force ghosts and li force ghost lightsaber battles i don't it's want gonna be to like be like call of duty it's like i'm down <laughs> heal me it's like all right Get back up. Get back in the field. Right. <laughs> I don't want there to be what I'm saying is a trilogy close to the nine that we've got. If they do something after the Skywalker saga, it has to be thousands of years into the future where some of these ways are kind of lost or forgotten where you can kind of have a soft reboot in the future. Mm -hmm. But I think even better potential for that is to go back a thousand years. What they were planning on doing yeah. with the Game of Thrones writers, uh, which it sucks that it's not happening or maybe it's a hidden it's a, gift. It's a good thing that it's not happening because those guys really screwed up the last season of Game of Thrones and do Old Republic. And that's what I want. I want to see, th you know, hundreds of Jedi, thousands of Jedi and thousands of Sith clashing Braveheart style. I want some of those CGI. Um, I want stuff to take inspiration from the CGI Blur Studios videos that were made for the video game Knights of the Old Republic from Bioware mm -hmm. because those were amongst the most impressive and badass, uh, you know, Star Wars stuff that we've seen. Uh, so Jedi are capable of dying. They're not overpowered. They're basically just like good fucking berserker, you know, like Braveheart fighters. Uh, with some force powers here and there, and then eventually get taken down. A little bit like Attack of the Clones arena but, stuff, oh, that was but bad. filmed a little better. Yeah, uh, you know, with people <laughs> not just doing this in the background, right? But do something. They, they don't even look like they care. I just watch it again. It's some so of them do. Some of them look like they're good. But see, I liked how some of them. It's like you know, block one, block two, and then go down. They're, they're not fucking invulnerable. I like their vulnerability in that scene, mm. and I'd like, like to see more of that. Um, the origins of the Jedi, the origins of the Sith. Um, maybe they can do something to fix the prophecy uh, that was only 30 years of peace. Even he's not dead. Even though the Jedi has... Palpatine's still alive somewhere. Yeah. You think he's still alive? Well, that he would be, has died many times before. Well, Joe, that would be going after the, the series instead of... But he goes back in time. He goes that back power in time. Too. He's still alive. Back in the... <laughs> Joe, cut it out. <laughs> Just saying. He's not going to go back in time. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Disney if they don't get the help of John and Dave and Deborah. And that they're like, what if? How, how many Patino times has he time? died? Mm -hmm. 100. How do you justify that? Oh, well, there was one line in the prequels where George read, uh, the dark side leads to some abilities that are considered unnatural. Like time know. travel. Like mm -hmm. time travel. Oh, fucking <laughs> It's a natural. Mm -hmm. I like it. Damn, Chris. It's old. Terrible <laughs> writer of Batman v Superman. <laughs> <laughs> no more. See, and, and, and talking a little bit about Rise of the Skywalker, you know who, why Force Awakens works so well? Because it was written by Lawrence uh, Kasdan, Kasdan, the writer of Empire. Oh, yeah. Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. He co wrote The Force Awakens mm -hmm. and, and with uh, JJ. And guess. Who then wrote The Last Jedi? Ryan Johnson. Was Lawrence there? Was No. Mm -hmm. And then who wrote... Uh, who was the partner in writing Rise of the Skywalker? Batman it was J.J., v. but was it with the writer of Empire Strikes Back? No. It was with the writer of Batman v Superman. So <laughs> now 
this kind of writing and, and the bad writing makes total sense now. You're going from the writer of Empire Strikes Back to the writer of Batman v Superman, and you cats. expect things to be at the exact same <laughs> level. I mean, no wonder it dropped quite a few points mm. on, on our rating. So it makes total sense now. That's how important it is to get good writers. Big so, time. Um, so now, because I, I on on retrospect and looking back, I see these things now, and I look at it from a critical eye, and I look at what talent is involved, and I think The Mandalorian has really taught me this and set it in stone. That any Star Wars property coming out in the future, I'm not going to be looking at, oh, is the, the armor cool in their, are their lightsabers? Ooh, is it? Mm -hmm. I will be like, <laughs> who's involved? Who's directing? Who's writing? Let me see that shit. And if I see Chris Terrio's number or name on there, you know, Batman v Superman writer, then fuck that. Mm. <laughs> Anyways. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for us. want to say one final thank you to Stardust for working mm -hmm. with us on this. Thank you guys. Uh, click the link below. Show them that we, we were doing our job. And, um, you know, follow us on there at Angry Joe Show. And because uh, we would love to work with them in the future for season two or uh, upcoming shows. Witcher, Witcher has been a huge hit. I think a lot of people didn't the boys. really like. Uh, the Boys is another good one. So there's plenty of really good things on the app uh, that you can interact with other fans with. The Boys, yeah. Witcher, and Season 2 of The Mandalorian. So grab it now in the link below. Thank you so much for watching our series and for watching this last episode. And... Um, you know, <laughs> it's simultaneously a good time to be a Star Wars fan and and a depressing time. The worst time. The, the worst time. It was the worst times. It, it was the best feelings. times. <laughs> so um, I'm just so excited to see where we're going to be at in three years, five years from now. And hopefully we'll still be uh, talking and discussing our our yeah. love <laughs> and hate together. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next Angry Joe show. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.